gaming currently is divided as to the benefits um, and the, the use case of NFTs. And we think that by utilizing NFTs in a, in a totally different way within tourism, we can unlock that, that problem. So we can, we can effectively use tourism as a mechanism for gaming to see the real proper tangible use cases of the technology. One of the most exciting parts of this industry is we're constantly hearing about new use cases and innovative utility for NFTs. Now, you've heard me talk about this before, from gaming to art to music to finance, even real estate, we've heard about how NFTs will transform all of these spaces. Now, another one of these is travel. And if you haven't considered NFTs in this context before, I've got some guests here today who are going to share with us how they're disrupting tourism by tokenizing fun holiday experiences. I'm Caleb Applegate, and each week I get the opportunity to speak with people at the forefront of blockchain gaming and Web3. Today I'm joined by Joel Anton and Graeme Stevens, who founded NFT Frontier. Guys, welcome to the Engine Room. How are you? Good, thank you. Yourself? Doing great, doing great. I appreciate you both taking time uh, to, to hang out with me here in the engine room. I'm, I'm excited to share with our audience what you all are building. Now, you both are, where, where are you currently in the world? So I'm currently in Mexico. Okay. And me, I'm based in Santiago de Chile. So I'm Chile. <laughs> okay, fun, fun. All right, and I know you mentioned to me before with internet stuff, you might, you might experience uh, a cutout or something. So, so just for our audience, if they disappear, that's why, but hopefully we're hoping that doesn't happen. So guys, well, welcome. Um, uh, before we get started and, and learn more about NFT from Frontier, I want to ask you, how did you get started? So from my side of that, I've been involved with Engine since the ICO. Um, I was around at that time and I saw what Engine were planning to do and was really excited by it. And then in early 2018, I happened to be working in Korea and Engine were at GDC Seoul. And I bumped into um, Roger and Pat Labine, who were doing the first ever demo of minting at the time. It was the first ever public display of minting. And uh, Roger and Roger and Pat were great to be around, great to talk to. Let me really try to understand uh, what was going on. And that's when I kind of realized, okay, I could see how this could be adopted by, by anyone. And that was me hooked basically from, from that point onwards. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I was, I'm really new into the crypto world, but I love technology since I was a kid. I played all these games and, you know, your mom's always said, you're not going to do anything around games and here we are. So I'm, I'm on the side of the creative part here. So, uh, Graham, we get together, start sharing ideas and he said, oh, wow, I think we have a technology to do that. That's called NFTs and say, oh, wow, I want to learn about that. So we start developing the, the ideas together and then we came to the conclusion that the tourism is the right way to, to do it. Yeah, no, I, I think it's a very uh, low hanging fruit use case and totally agree. But before we get into New Frontier, how did the two of you connect originally? Okay, so originally we worked together, um, but we've not actually met in person. So we're a lot like VTech and Maxi, the, the old story that, They've never met in person. We're exactly the same. I, I want to hear about this. So on, NFT, NFT Frontier is designed to create innovative engagement and experiences for, for tourists. To be honest with you, it's more than that as well, because there are a number of other use cases for NFTs within tourism that we're actually doing as well, such as, for example, certifying tour guides. We've also been looking in, in Scotland, which is obviously where I'm from. 
at um, anti-counterfeiting with NFTs for, for whiskey, for example, is something we've explored. But our main area is creating interactive adventures and creating gamification around the acquiring of the tokens in order to enhance the experience um, of tourists that are, that are on the ground. And when we started this, we had a vision that, that this could work, this idea of layering digital content on top of, on top of the real world. But since we've started the business and we've uh, attended the National Conference and Tourism in Scotland as well, we've seen Disney are starting to do a very similar thing. And they have a vision of doing a very similar concept within the theme parks. And like them, we see it as being something that can engage before, during and after a visit. And we also saw, although it's not related to tourism, we saw the social side of NFTs come out with the, the way in which, for example, with Axie Infinity, that um, people were able to you know, create income during the pandemic through, through gameplay. And so that kind of inspired us to make sure that we had a social and community side as well. So within all our projects, we look at including the both the, the visitors and the local community in the planning and the development of the solutions. That's amazing. So, so essentially what you're saying is it's not just the experience while you're there. There's kind of a lead up and then a post where the, the game, the gamification aspect of visiting a location or uh, you mentioned Disney or theme park, um, it, it's, it, it's got like a full experience not just while you're there at the at the park or the place and it also works both from either the physical world into the digital world and that kind of idea of hybrid mixing between the two but also we've seen some good examples in tourism like the Australian Open for example in Decentraland the British Museum has done NFTs online as well and there's been a few examples, concerts and things that have been happening in the virtual world. Mm -hmm. But the real aim of those events is to entice and to effectively reward the potential to go in the real world after. So, and also, for example, with Barbados, who, have, who are creating the virtual embassy, it's a, another example from Decentraland, that's based very much around the idea of it could be before, during or after. And as I understand it, you're eventually going to be able to get an e-visa to visit the actual country while mm. you're while you're inside the game. So it's definitely something we see transcending the the, the periods within within the tourism experience for sure. Yes, and the idea got born while we were talking. Like, imagine that you travel to Scotland. And you want to follow the, the trails of adventure of the story about William Wallace. And what happens mm -hmm. if you end up the whole tour and experience, and then somebody gives you a QR code and you scan that QR code and you got the William Wallace sword, which is connected to a game. But that sword is only being there. You can have it in other place just there. So it's unique. And you can sell it if you don't want to use it or if you don't play games, and then you can play, uh, pay your whole trip. That would be amazing. Mm -hmm. That's the way we start the framing this crazy idea together. And we're mm -hmm. also looking at how attractions could bind together to create these kind of almost like digital bucket lists. Mm -hmm. So you take, you take a theme, and if you take, I mean, Battle in Scotland is a very good example of this. You can also personalize the experience depending on what the, the, the visitor decides to do. So say you go to a battle experience and you're particularly interested in armor, you can then tailor the utility of the token around the theme of armor. Specific, mm. So each token that represents a different area of, of warfare can have a completely different journey for those that choose to, to receive it. That's really fun. I'm, I'm just thinking, man, I wanna, I wanna do this. <laughs> My family and I love to travel, so... This is something that we would wholeheartedly embrace. Now, you both have already partnered with official tourism bodies um, all around the world, including the UK, Spain, Mexico, and New Zealand, if I got that correct. That's correct, yes. Okay, I imagine there are more coming, and I, I'm, I'm thinking that there are probably additional opportunities 
um, with non-government bodies. So the obvious one that I think of is Lord of the Rings activities in, say, New Zealand. And that happens to be, personally, my, my favorite book series of all time. Um, what's the process been like reaching out to these tourism bodies? And how do the conversations usually go? Is it, does it catch them completely off guard or are they like, wow, this is incredible. And yes, we're in, how can we be helpful? Yes. Yeah, so we, we followed the deliberate process really, because we tried originally to talk to attractions directly and to talk to, for example, visit Scotland as a, as a primary example. And there wasn't really um, any ability to do that because the tourism bodies have connections with tourism industry associations and really the businesses that are able to interact with the tourism industry are members of those associations. So what we did in in Scotland is we actually were brought into Travel Tech Scotland, which is at the University of Edinburgh. And it's a whole bunch of companies that are working on technology and tourism and all sorts of, of different respects, but they have the connections to the, the tourism bodies that we need in order to to make the the progress. So effectively, our model is, is we make the connection with the tourism body, and then we offer webinars and educational programs around understanding what the metaverse is in the first instance. So Mm -hmm. in Scotland, for example, we had the whole attraction sector um, through ASVA, the Association of Scottish Visitor Attractions, and we did a webinar with them and explain you know, what the metaverse is, how you get involved, what the technology is like. And we invited actually Costume Clash and Go Health Hero um, hmm. to, to obviously fellow engine adopters to, to that session. And, and as we went through and we explained all this, the, the, um, the benefit of having the games there was is they could actually try to, to then see how this technology could really work in in the real world. And it was quite interesting because with with Joshua, for example, at at Costume Clash, he was showing an example, a demo of the game. It's got the street scenes. It's a bit like Mario Kart. And immediately there was was comments saying, well, I I represent an attraction in the city of Glasgow. So hypothetically, could we use NFTs for our visitors to get exclusive access to a track based on the city of Glasgow. So the buildings become, you know, landmarks from the city mm-hmm. or perhaps yep. use, you know, an official national racetrack like Silverstone or Knock Hill. And as the conversation progressed, light bulbs started going off. And the response we had from, from, that, from that event was extremely positive to the point yep. that we've now been commissioned to create a playbook hmm. for the tourism attraction sector. So our model is speak to the speak to the tourism body, develop a relationship, and create um, webinars and, and education for the attractions. Then identify from that attractions that are interested in doing a pilot. That pilot is evaluated, so we have a, a proper process with KPIs. And in yeah. Scotland's case, we have a university that's involved in some research into the the outcomes of that as well and then effectively the pilots then either continue to become a much bigger enhanced project which is exactly what's happened in Scotland it's it's grown from let's create an initial batch of NFTs and Mm -hmm. create a community um, competition to get community contributions to what NFT should represent the attraction to a whole host of things where we're building an app about the metaverse that's going into schools and universities across Scotland um, that's teaching not just about the metaverse, but about that attraction as well. And so once we've got that, that pilot and the feedback is positive, we then talk to the wider attraction sector and based on the feedback, who's interested in, in following suit. So in the case in Scotland, ASVA have already got a number of interested parties who are following on from the great from the great tapestry. And we felt that we had to do it this way because there is a big barrier in terms of education about the metaverse mm-hmm. and especially about NFTs and blockchain. It's 
there's a big barrier to, to entry potentially. So we, we put a lot of emphasis on breaking those barriers down and creating the education needed to, to break down the idea that this technology isn't necessarily complex from the end user's point of view. So for example, for Engine Beam, which we've, which we've been using in, in these campaigns, we say it's easier than getting a, a coffee at Starbucks, because if you're going to scan a QR at Starbucks to receive your coffee and your rewards, there's five steps. But if you scan a QR code with Engine Beam, there's four steps in order to, to claim your QR. So now suddenly you've got a QR code, which everyone's been using in the pandemic. Yep. And you've got, you know, clear, clear documentation that it's not that hard to interact with it. And that breaks down and that breaks down the barriers. The, the other thing that we did a lot of and, and we continue to do is look at projects in the NFT space that don't work. So, mm -hmm. for example, in, in a number of different industries, not just tourism, sports, for example, we've had a look at where it's not gone right. And generally speaking, where, where this goes wrong is when the community that you're trying to work with or the visitors or the customers don't actually understand why you're doing it, what the benefit is for them, and ultimately what the, the, the future can look like when, when you embrace this technology. So we're trying to deliberately make sure that, that we do that within our projects. Gotcha. Now, <clears throat> you guys are live though, right? This is a full yes. functioning, not just concept, but, but is it a product? Effecti effectively, yes. Effectively, every attraction that we work with is a bespoke okay. situation. It's bespoke in terms of what the, what the NFTs represent. It's bespoke right. in terms of the utility that they offer. And it's bespoke in terms of the gamification and the activities around earning those tokens. So, and some attractions have um, specific specific goals in mind. So, for example, an, an island that we're working with to create an interactive adventure across that island are yeah. saying, well, there's actually certain things we have in mind here. We need more digital interactivity. We need to target certain demographics because we're not getting as many families or as much involvement with certain age groups. And mm -hmm. they want to utilize the technology to create engagement in those particular groups. All mm. the way through other projects where it starts like that, but then it becomes, okay, how do we then develop that to involve others as well? Mm. Yes, so, so you, can, you can kind of bake in specified KPIs, which achieve like designated goals. Yes. That's really cool. Sorry, Joel, go ahead. Yes, and Graham is saying a, a key point there because what we have saw in the other projects, they always fail because they lack on the training sessions and the education. And that's something we, we always are proud because we are official teachers, we are teachers, formal teachers. So, so we understand the, 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 the importance of, of teaching people how to use the technology. Because when, when you teach somebody to understand how to use something, it's going to be useful and meaningful. And when you do so, the barriers of entry and the learning curve change a lot. So that's why we think and our, our products, our, our projects always starts with education. So mm -hmm. that's, that's our key goal. When we start talking with somebody, we try to do as your staff and you as the owner or the CEO of a company, all of you must understand from A to Z how the technology works and how the products works. Because if you understand that, you can engage your customers by solving their problems or making their experience really fun. And yeah. the other thing we've actually done is we obviously realize that we can't be on the ground with all, with all customers all the time. So one of the things we're trying, we're trying out is a concept called digital champions. And the idea is, is that we identify early on, whether it's members of the local community or visitors that are engaged by the idea of this technology. And then mm. we work with them so that they can become that kind of frontline support. So if somebody's saying, well, okay, you know, I'd like to do this. How do you know where? What do I do to scan the QR code? Or 
you know, how do I, how do I install the engine wallet or whatever it might be, they're mm-hmm. then there to support that. So it comes back to giving back to the community so that they are the ones that end up owning and benefiting from it. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you guys for explaining that. That's really cool. So it's live now. If I, if, if I take my family to Edinburgh, Am I able to engage with this and and start collecting NFTs? Um, Not in Edinburgh, but um, if you take the train from Edinburgh um, to um, the borders, to Galashiel, you'd be able to start start using NFTs in a a museum there, yes. The the other thing that we are doing with that particular project, it's it's um, taking a bit of time because the rail, the rail network's just been nationalized again in Scotland, is we're looking at trialing um, NFTs on, on the transport network, on ScotRail. And, mm-hmm. and the idea of this, we call it a gateway token. So the idea is, is if you happen to be traveling to a location where there's an attraction that utilizes this technology, then there's a QR code on the back of your ticket. And that NFT is simply there to say, while you are in... Gala Shields, while you're in Dundee, while you're in Glasgow, while you're in Edinburgh, yeah. you can. And just a little list of things that, that they can do and or introductions to the, to the project. Very cool. What, what's the reaction been like among people who've actually gone through the process and have engaged with this? It's been, it's been pretty positive, I have to say. Um, it's the, the biggest thing, the biggest thing that we've that we've learned, I think from doing this is that ultimately what we think we're going to be doing with it and what ends up happening changes Mm. totally. So for example, (laughs) with the Great Tapestry of Scotland, what started off as a small pilot now has apps. We're building um, a VR VR art gallery so that the tapestry, so you have the real tapestry, which is sewn by over a thousand different stitchers in Scotland and tells the history of Scotland. And then you have the, the virtual reality digital one, which is made up of our NFTs and community contributed NFTs as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's really neat. So there's an element of, um, I was here, I did this, I have proof. I, Cause I, I think back um, when I was younger, I think it was in high school. Um, I used to visit the national parks in, in the United States and they had this really cool like passport book. And every, every national park you would go to, they would stamp the book and it's like, oh, I was here, you know, on this date. And they would change that stamp out daily, right, with the date. So, so this is like, like a version of that, but so much cooler with so much more utility and value. So um, I imagine there must be an element of like geo-blocking um, as well to ensure people are actually there. How, how, are, you, how are you navigating that? Like, it's something that we're seeing at concerts and other events, but how are you all like handling that? Yes. Yeah, so, at, so at the moment, um, as we're really in, in pilots and, and early phases, we're doing it through registering when you arrive in the location. So either when you come to the museum or you arrive on the island, there's a place you can go to take part. But like you say, actually, with, with the island adventure, we suggested, well, you know, it's a bit like a passport. And, and actually, mm-hmm. the first thing they said is, is we tried passports and, and nobody <laughs> liked them because no. they were such a, a pain to have to stamp right. and sign. But they really liked the idea of, the, of the, the digital equivalent of it. And so what we've ended up doing with, with the island is w- the island's got specific themes of things that it's famous for. It's famous for food and drink, history, heritage, culture. So what we've done is created an activity related to each theme on the island. And so if you take food and drink, for example, what you have to do to get a food and drink NFT? Well, in this case, you have to go to an ice cream parlor, you get blindfolded, and you have to guess the flavor of three ice creams. And if you get That's two fun. out of three correct, you, you get your NFT. Okay. So okay. it's all about creating engagement with the local community that wouldn't exist otherwise. I mean, people might go and buy an ice cream and say hello, but this is creating um, a, a deeper connection between the visitors and, and the local community, which is really important in places like Scotland. Yeah, absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. Where do you, where do you guys see all of this heading? Are you, you've started your pilot phase, but where, where does this go? 
Well, I think I think the honest answer to that is that it's it's pretty open ended in terms of you know this kind of idea of this this adventure where you collect things is is transferable nearly everywhere. But where it's going to get really quite interesting is when things start from a virtual standpoint. That's one way. The other way is, for example, again, with Great Tapestry of Scotland, we're looking at creating in, in the third phase um, mm-hmm. a physical digital experience. So there'll be hidden scrolls that you have to find within the town, but we'll also be going into an engine game in order to complete the, the hunt. So some will be hidden in the, in the game and some will be hidden in, in the town. And I think as the metaverse develops, this idea of these physical digital experiences, I think is just going to grow and grow. Mm-hmm. Um, Where they're all connected. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And, and also, as, as we've said, on the peripheral of that, we've had um, conversations around certification, anti-counterfeiting. Um, we've also looked at things like loyalty and rewards programs um, mm-hmm. and how you could supercharge hotel or airline frequent flyer programs, for example, using, yeah. y- using NFTs as, as membership cards and other things. So yeah. when, you actually, when you actually start to sit down and plot where can it go, yeah. there's lots we'll of be the, ways we, the ways we can take it. But, but ultimately, yeah. we yeah. think we, we are the only official registered met, you know nft metaverse tourism company doing this whole a to z including integration with games and the great thing about our, our relationships cool. with the engine network is we always say we're the trunk of the tree and the games are the branches mm, yeah, and so yeah. as we're talking to the attractions we've got all these different potential uh, games and experiences that we can we can connect them to and that gives our overall, you know, our overall product um, a much, a much yes. more dynamic and, feel. And you need to know that not every, every stories are the same. So some, some of the stories are going to be a good match, for example, for Lost Relics. Imagine mm-hmm. castles, the Stirling Castle and other castles around Scotland and the world connected to a, a game or a virtual world such as the Lost Relic. But maybe that's not the case for something related to stargazing, for example. That should be like Space Misfits or others. So that's the way, I, I like the way Graham frames because we are the trunk of the tree and we are yeah. calling the other co- collaborators. Hey, we have this project, this attraction. Do you want to join in with your games? And they're going to say, oh, wow, because it, it's a no brainer. It, it's the way to engage new players to engage new people. And even if you are not playing games, maybe your son does. Maybe it's right. rela- relative to you is doing so. And if I can cash out some of that, it's going to be great as well. So who doesn't want to travel and get, get something back? Yeah, and, yeah. and ultimately, and- when you look at some of the locations we're working with, there, there's one where you get 15 million annual visitors. And in terms of the demographics of that 15 million visitors, in terms mm-hmm. of the typical metaverse user, which is going to change over time, but that typical metaverse user now, you're looking at a sort of three to four million um, visitor level in, in one location that fit the profile of wanting to interact with this technology. And so the, the potential is there for, for a, real, a, a really large conduit to adoption for the, for the engine network. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, what advice would you give uh, a developer looking to get into uh, Web3 and utilize, utilizing blockchain technology? What would you say? I, w- I would say that we came into this um, not being from a development background. We came into this with, with, other, with other skills and to, to work out as we go. But what I would say is, is that you shouldn't be shouldn't be scared to try it, whether whether you've done it before or not, because the support is there through um, the engine network and through engine as, as a business. I would say that that ultimately there are, and as in tourism as a prime example of this, there, there's a number of ways that you can take this technology beyond, you know, the, the conventional thinking around around gaming. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. Okay, as we wrap up, what does your community have to look forward to? What, what's on your roadmap? So we are going to be um, starting, we, we've got the Metaverse Playbook or, um, already, which is the interactive guide to the Metaverse for, U, for UK, but we're going to be starting to develop similar resources in Spanish for, for Latin America. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to start to see us um, bring to life projects that, that are already in our pipeline. You're going to see more um, tourism authorities and more events with different um, bodies around the world. At, we, we're also looking um, in the future at having an IDO and having a, you know, a, a token that will, will underpin some of the things that we're doing. And that's to come in the future and stay tuned for the details of how that's, that's going to work. And, and ultimately, what, what you should see, and feel free to follow us on, on Telegram and, uh, and keep up to date, but you should see an incremental yeah. development and an incremental change in the number of clients. That's awesome. Now, how can uh, our listeners, uh, how can they get in touch? How, how can they find you guys? So they can find us via our website, which is nftfrontier.io. Um, they can okay. find us on Telegram, which is um, t.me slash um, NF, NFT Frontier. And they can also find us on Twitter, which is at NFT Innovations. Okay, awesome. All right, last question, and then we'll wrap up. What is one thought-provoking idea that you want to leave our audience with? So for me, that, that's an easy one. Gaming currently is divided as to the benefits um, and the, the use case of NFTs. And we think that by utilizing NFTs in a, in a totally different way within tourism, we can unlock that, that problem. So we can, we can effectively use tourism as a mechanism for gaming to see the real proper tangible use cases of the technology. In my case, it will be reducing the gaps of the technology, making meaningful. And that's an advice to any developer. You need to be on the shoes of your end user, see what they need, see what they engage, see what they like. In the, if you do so, you're going to reduce the barriers of entry of anybody and put education first in order to make it real, accessible, and fun. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time today. I really do appreciate it. Uh, to our listeners, thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Engine Room. Check out NFT Frontier, and please share this episode, like us, subscribe. We really appreciate you uh, tuning in. Have a great day. Cheers.